following our look at QR codes and barcodes, we're now looking at wearable technology. So what is classed as this? Well, the device is built into clothes, worn as accessories, or dramatically implanted into the body. So in some extreme cases, you can even have devices put inside your body, maybe under your skin, but usually not. So what makes them technology really is they are smart. And I've done smart in quotes because it doesn't mean intelligent. It means they've got a processor, so a processor which can process some data, and also they can make use, can utilize a network connection. So for example, this fancy Psycho watch is a nice watch, it's an accessory, but it's not a smart, it's not a wearable technology because it's got no processor, because it's got no network connection. However, an Apple watch is also an accessory, but it is classed as a wearable technology because it's got a processor inside it and also can connect to a network like your phone, also to a mobile network as well. So a normal watch is not a wearable technology, a smart watch is. To be honest, if I was making this video 10 years ago, I would be likely saying how I expected wearable technology to blow up and become much bigger than actually it has nowadays. I mean, really, as I record this, most wearable technology is just watches and fitness trackers, which are not, you know, they're not, people, people 10 years ago were expecting there to be loads of implants and necklaces and all sorts of stuff built into clothes hasn't quite happened but what has happened in the time since then is the internet of things has grown so the iot shorthand for internet of things is the idea that nowadays more and more everyday devices things like fridges washing machines fans um, light bulbs even are built as to be smart so they're built with processes built with network connections as well and the idea is that there are going to be benefits of devices sharing data between them. So maybe you can turn your light bulb on when you're out of the house. I don't know why you would, but you can access stuff remotely. And wearable technology could be considered part of this because it can share data. Maybe on your watch, you can um, turn your heating on from anywhere. That would be useful. But at the moment, wearable technology is mostly limited to things like smart watches. So. That's related, right? So currently mostly used for health and fitness and also entertainment and leisure. So Apple Watches can be used to, you know, um, reply to messages or answer phone calls and so on. That would be entertainment and leisure mostly. So smart watches, as I say, are kind of a dominating example of wearable technology. And via sensors they have, they have different sensors built in. They will collect data about various things like heart rate, the amount of steps you've walked, your blood pressure and also how many calories you've burnt while you've been exercising. So useful bits of data which we can use to assess our health and fitness. There are not lots of good examples beyond smartwatches honestly but some do include glasses. So this was a Google Glass from a few years ago. It kind of launched and didn't really take off because the idea was it's a pair of glasses like normal but there is a processor built in. There is sort of a little screen here which can show you stuff, there's a camera as well. So the idea being it can collect data like uh, what you're looking at and you can also use it for entertainment. Maybe you could play a video via this little screen while you are on the train maybe. It never quite took off, but that is an option which may come back. A slightly more dramatic option is this, which is described as a tattoo. I don't know how similar to an actual tattoo it is, but this is a very small, a very small circuit board and little processor which can record things like your pulse, this is on someone's wrist, so other health information can also be used as a password. So instead of like a swipe card, you can just put your wrist down and scan yourself in. Maybe even, you know, to get on a train or a bus, you could scan your wrist. A bit weird, but you could do it. And also a VR headset could be considered a wearable technology. What data it collects, I'm not quite sure. Probably not much at the moment, but it could collect things like your, your pulse, your heart rate, where you're looking inside the headset, maybe your stress levels, something like that. So not loads of examples beyond watches and fitness trackers, but lots of different bits of information could be collected in theory by these devices.